many more flowers out here. Yes, sir. Give it to you. Give it to you. Well, I'm just speechless. And that lunch, and wild chicken. I didn't know it was ever wild. Gosh, I had no idea that people lived like this right out in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, sugar? Thanks. One. Three. Oh, I know it's a big load for a Denny dad to carry. All right, I'm a hick. You know so many American words. Do you know what a hick is? A hick is one who lives in a stick. Stick, plural. The stick. Ah, pardon. The stick. I remember now. <coughs> How long did it take you to build up a plantation like this? I came to the Pacific 25 years ago, when I was a young man. Emil, is it true that all the planters on these islands, are they all running away from something? Who oh, is not running away from something? There are fugitives everywhere. <coughs> Paris, New York, <laughs> even in Star, <coughs> where you come from. Oh, little rock. Little rock. You know fugitives there. Eh? I'll show you a picture of a little rock fugitive. I got this clipping from my mother today. Ensign Nelly Barge. Little Rock's own Florence Nightingale. That was written by Mrs. Lehman, the social editor. Ah. She went to school with my mother. To read her, you think I'm practically the most important nurse in the entire Navy. And it's only a matter of time before I become a lady admiral. In this picture, you do not look much like a admiral. Well, that was taken before I knew what rain and heat and mud could do to your disposition. But it is a rainy day. Gosh, it's beautiful here. Just look at that yellow sun. You know, I don't think we're at the end of the world like everyone else does. I just can't work myself up to get in that low. Uh do you think I'm crazy, too? Oh, no. They all do over at the fleet hospital. You know what they call me? Knucklehead Nelly. <laughs> well, I guess I am. But I just can't help it. When the sky is a bright canary yellow, I forget every cloud I've ever seen. So they Living on a hillside, 
walking on an ocean, beautiful and still. This is what I mean. This is what I longed for. Someone young and smiling, climbing up my I bore him. He's a cultured Frenchman. I'm a little pig. Young and I, Boswell's and Dockles, proudly pursued her. She would have.
Young French women. Yeah. I'm talking about somebody ears. <laughs> so is he. <laughs> I gotta get a boat and get over there. I'm feeling held down. I need to take a trip. Uh, all the officers can sign our boats. I'll get a boat, all right. I'll latch on to some officer. He's got some imagination. We'd like to see that forced to ceremonial as much as I do. Oh, it's a hell of a ceremonial. Dance. Yeah. Drinking. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Why, yeah. right, boy? We all know why you want to go to Valley High. Why? Because the French plan to put all the young women over there. <coughs>
Huh? Are you the crummy major? No, I'm even crummier than that. I'm a lieutenant. A lieutenant? <laughs> yeah, lieutenant. Hi, lieutenant. You on the rock? Yeah, I just came in and now can't be Yeah, where from? The Little Island, South of Marine Beach. And you've been up when they use real bullets?
Hiding out in one of these Jap hell dockings where you could sit and watch for enemy ships when they start down the bottom. Look, right down that way. What do you think, Bill? Well, sir, our pilots could do a hell of a lot of damage to these Jap convoys with information like that. You would have to wind the man off here at night from a suburb. Yes, sir. And uh, who's going to do it? Well, sir, uh, I've been lamb. That's quite an assignment, son. How long do you think they could last there? Sending out messages before the jet found you. I think I'd be okay if I could take a man with me who really knew the country. Now, headquarters have found there's a French civilian here. You <coughs> stole a plantation of Marie Louise Island. Marie Louise? That's a good spot. Right on the bottom, eh? What's this Frenchman's name? Emile de Beck. Okay, Cable. I'll see you in my office in half an hour. Sure. Come on, Bill. You and I might get into this damn war yet. <coughs>
Turn it for me. Captain Racket, please excuse the way I look. Oh, you're fine, you're fine. May I present Commander Hobson? I uh, have the pleasure of meeting Miss Borgwee twice a week. We serve together on the GI's Entertainment Committee. Oh. May I present Lieutenant Joseph King? Miss Ball. Sit down, Miss Ball. Now, how's the Thanksgiving Entertainment Committee? Very well, thank you, sir. We practice whenever we get the chance. Now, about a week ago, you had lunch with a French blood. Maybe you'll be back. Yes, sir. What do you know about him? Well, I, uh... What do I know about him? That's right. I, uh... We... We met at the officers' club dance. He was there, and I met him. Then I had lunch with him that yes, day. Yes, but what kind of a man is he? He's very nice. He's kind. He's attractive. I, uh... I just don't know what you want to know, sir. Miss Borobus, what Captain Brackett wants to know is, uh, did you discuss politics? No, sir. Which you have discussed politics, Commander. <laughs> now, we are specifically interested in is when these guys leave France, it's usually because they're in some kind of a trouble. Has he said anything about that? What about his family? He has no family. No wife, no mother. He hasn't any children? No, sir. And he didn't tell you why he left France? Yes, sir. He left France because he killed a man. Did he tell you why? No, but he will if I ask him. Well, Miss Poor Bruce, that is exactly what we'd like to have you do. Find out as much as you can about him, his background, his opinions, and why he killed this guy in France. In other words, you want him to spy on him? Well, it's something like that. Why? Do you suspect him of anything? No, 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 no. Just that we don't know very much about him. Look, will you help us with all this? I'll try. Thank you. You may go there if you wish. I really don't know very much about him, do I? He's kept a lot of secrets from me. <laughs> and they all... You don't spring up a couple of Polynesian kids at a woman right off the bat. I'm afraid I'm not going to get much out of her. She is uh, obviously in love with the guy. <laughs> I find that a little hard to believe, sir. You know, they tell me he's a middle-aged man. <laughs> Kate, it's a common mistake of boys of your age and athletic ability to underestimate men who have reached their maturity. Sir, I, I didn't... Frequently, young women find grown men attractive, strange as it may seem to be true. So I myself, for over 50 years, and I'm a bachelor at the cable, I do not consider myself by any manner of means true. <laughs> what the hell's the matter with you, Bill? <laughs> Nothing, evidently. Okay, they will see a chap. Hey, Weybridge? Yes. Got any money? Yes, sir. Good, I'll take it off you. Yes, sir. Now, what makes you so damn sure this mission won't work? The reason is I. Four miles long, three miles wide. Let's say that every time we send our message, we move to another hill. It seems to be looking at this thing optimistically. If you last, well, about a week. Yes, but it would be worth it if it were the right. With some decent information, our side can get go. Operation Alligator will get on its cap. <coughs> you do, sir. I oh. got it. See you at Charbel. I'll see you at Charbel. Okay, okay. See you at Charbel. Did you get the address right? I think so, sir. <coughs> Mrs. Amelia Fortuna, 325 Walker Avenue, Cleveland, Ohio. Oh. I'll pack it myself. Get out here, sir. Yes, sir.
thinks that everything I do is right. Of course, I don't tell her everything I do. My mother is so prejudiced. Against Frenchmen? Against anyone outside of Little Rock. She makes a big thing out of two people having different backgrounds. You mean age? Oh, no. Mother thinks older men are better for a girl than younger men. This has been a discouraging day. <laughs> Do you agree with my mother about people having things in common? For instance, if a man likes symphony records, and she likes Dinah Shore, and he reads Marcel Proust, and she doesn't read anything, well, what do you think? Do you think mother's right? <laughs> well, she might be. Well, I don't think she is. Yeah, well, maybe she's not. Well, goodbye, Lieutenant. You've helped a lot. Liz, you don't know too much about this guy. Maybe you ought to read those letters over two or three times. Well, I'll show you what I think of that idea. Yeah, well, don't say I didn't warn you.
Macedonian and you don't have people. Second, this is a very extremely dangerous mission and there's no guarantee that you'll survive or that it will do any good. Third, it might be a great deal of you. It could be the means of turning the tide of war in this area. I understand all these things. You ready to give us your answer? Yes, I am. My answer must be no. When a man reaches death, he must weigh values very carefully. He must weigh the sweetness of his life against the thing he has to die. The probability of death is very great for all of us. I know that I am well with the people. I am not certain that I believe that what you ask me to do. We are asking you to help us lick the Japs. It's as simple as that. We are against the bloody Japs. I know what you are against. What are you for? When I was 22, I thought the world hated foolish as much as I. But I was foolish. I killed one. And I was forced to flee to a knife. Since then, I have had no help from anyone of any kind. I have seen these bullies multiply and grow strong. The world stood by and watched them. How the hell did this get back? Let's be honest. Aren't you just a guy who's in love with a girl and you're putting her above everything else in the world? Yes. I do care about my life with her more than anything else in the world. It is the only thing that is important to me. This I believe in. This I am sure of. This I have. I cannot risk to lose. Good day, gentlemen. He's an honest man, but he's wrong. Of course, we can dance <laughs> here about the world if we win. Point is, we can be dance here about all of our first we lose, can't we? Well, can't we? Sure. Of course. Cable, the world must scratch your five dollars. I'll see you tomorrow. to be signed. And there's another delegation of French planners here complaining about the stolen pig. You know, the one to see me stuck in barbecue and command Okay, 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 I'll take care of it. Yes, sir. What should I do, Commander Harvest? Go back to my outfit tonight? No. Take a couple of days off. Unwind. <laughs> Unwind? Sure. Take a boat. Go fish it. Go.
There's no view around here. You wait, you tell that. Mary, what's going on? What? You like? Who is she? Leah. Leah is French then. Leah. But she no French girl. She talk in knees like me. <laughs> we bear pretty people, no? <laughs> Do you speak English? Only a few words. She talk French. Fonse, fonse.
again. I'll have another one of those. Tom, he comes. You get a nitty, you soon do try, Vinny. Hey, Mary, don't ask those poor two set of memorial fellows not to bar me from this island. Oh. I didn't know it was a religious dance those girls would do with their skirts on. No, no. If I'd have known it was a religious dance, I wouldn't have got up and danced with them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here we go. Here I have enough. 
We're the same kind of people fundamentally, you and me. We appreciate things. We get enthusiastic about things. It's really quite exciting when two people are like that. We're not blasé. You know what I mean? We are both knuckleheads, cockeyed optimists. I hear the human race is falling on its face. And hasn't very far to go. But every whippoorwill is selling me a bill and telling me it just ain't so. I could say life is just a bowl of jello and appear more intelligent and smart. But I suck like a dog.
by Marie Stars and Johnson.
got the truck lights on, that's something. A white left in that car started. From what I can't understand is how some guys ain't got the artistic imagination to put gas in a generator. So the show can be a success. Especially when they're on the committee. You're on the committee too! Why didn't you tell us it wasn't gassed up? Look, I'm acting in the show, and I'm stage manager, and I'm producer. I can't think of everything, can I? Sure you can. Just put your two heads together. <laughs> Look, Chuck, I got a production on my hands. How's the wait with that go? Oh, I can't tell. Nobody's clapping. If nobody's clapping, it ain't going good. You ought to be able to figure that one out. Put your two heads together. But I thought you was the one with the two heads. <laughs> Pardon, can you tell me where I can find this bottle? She's on stage right now. She's the MC. She can't talk to no one right now. You want me to take the flowers into her? No, I would prefer to give them to her myself. Well, you must have the back. Yes. Well, do me a favor, the back. Don't try to see her tonight. Why? Because I got her in a great mood, and I don't want nothing upsetting her again. She has been upset? Upset? She's asked for a transfer to another island. And day before yesterday, she busted out crying, right in the middle of rehearsals, saying she couldn't go on with the show. And she wouldn't either unless Captain Brackett spoke to her and told her how important it was for all the guys on the face. So do me a favor, will ya? Don't try to see it in that. She has asked for a French player? Don't tell her I told you. Nobody's supposed to know. But I must see her tonight. Ah, look, stay out of sight till after the show. I'll take the flowers in there. Hey, come on. Hey, Billis. Billis? Lieutenant Cable. Shh. Lieutenant Cable is supposed to be in his bed. Over at the hospital? You're not being well. I'm all right now. The fever's gone. Anyway, you can't keep in that damn place any longer. Look, I'm, I'm looking for a guy named Billis. A great guy for getting boats. And I need a boat right now. I gotta get to my island! What? That damn island with two volcanoes on it. You ever been over there? Why, that's island. I sailed over there every day with this damn malaria stuff. Have you ever sailed over early in the morning? With warm rain playing across your face? You can see her again. Like last night.
bunch of the hackers. It's a man's watch, I know, but it's a good one. It belonged to my grandfather. It's kind of a lucky piece, too. My dad, you wore it off the last
Miss Bonbosch, I would like to have you know that I consider you the most wonderful woman in, in, in the entire world. And I get on being such a heel that they let you think that I gave you those flowers. But you did give them to Here's me. Here's the now. card that came with it. Are you all right, Miss Bonbosch? Uh-huh. Look, I'll be waiting around the area here, just in case you need it. Just, just sing out. What's the matter, Nellie, the nurse? Having diplomatic difficulties with friends? Joe Cable, who let you out of the hospital? Me. I'm okay. Oh, Joe, you're trying to get across to Valley High. That little girl you told me about. Leah, I've just seen her for the last time, I guess. Oh, Joe. Nellie, I love her. And yet, and yet I just heard myself say I couldn't marry her. What's the matter with me, Nellie? What kind of a guy am I anyway? You're all right. You're just far away from home. We're both so far away from home. Dad, I must see you. I mean, I do I do you excuse us, okay? No, wait a minute. Say, Joe, please. I've been meaning to call you, you but I just... You know, I've asked what I'm trying to say. Why? What does it mean? I'll explain it to you tomorrow. No, not tomorrow. No. What does it mean, Ellie? It means I can't marry you. Do you understand? I can't marry you. Because of my children. Oh, it's not because of your children. They're sweet. It is a Polynesian mother. <clears throat> that mother. I'm not. Yes. It isn't as if I could give you a good reason. There is no reason. This is emotional. This is something that is born in me. It is not. I don't believe this thing is born in me. Then why do I feel the way I do? All I know is I can't help it. I can't help it. Please, Joe, explain how we feel, please. Yeah. Yeah. Donna, are you ready? I'm ready, ma'am. I'll go with you. But listen to me. Why does she talk? I do not believe it is born in you. I do not believe it. It's not born in you. It happens after you're born.
Sir, if you'd like to go back to your office, I'll let you know as soon as I tell you. No, no. I don't want to ask your problems. I'm staying right here. Yes, sir. Should have been a message by now. Should have been a message, that's all. They should have time to set up a, an observation post by now, don't you think? No. That racket. Oh, Bill, Bill. Can't you see I'm busy? Don't interrupt me now, Bill. It's about the city out there, sir. Bill is trying to curb his over at operations. Estimates that Bill is out this morning cost the Navy over $600,000. $600,000? I'm going to chew that guy up. Get him in here. Yes, sir. And no matter what happens, you get a message, just break it. Break right in. Yes, sir. Get in now. <laughs> Captain Brackett, this is Lieutenant Bozano. You flew the mission. Captain. Oh, yes. You know, one man in an outfit like you is like a rotten apple in a bag. Just what did you think of sitting right there in your little rubber dingy, right in the middle of Empress Augusta Bay? The whole U.S. Navy looking for you, trying to arrest you. How the hell did you fall out of a Catalina anyway? Well, sir, the Japan aircraft gun busted a hole in the side of the plane, and I fell through. The wind just sucked me out. Do you mean to tell you want me to believe that, that you, you had a package of a plane that was away to take on a dangerous mission, and an anti-aircraft gun hit the plane, and you fell out, you were sucked out, you and your little parachute. Well, I don't believe you jumped out. You jumped, you fell, which is it? Sort of half and half, if you get the picture. This is the most humiliating thing that ever happened to you. Adams, when did you discover he was on that plane? Well, sir, we be out of an hour. It was still dark, I know. While we were flying across the real wind, the Japanese aircraft spotted us and made that hit. That's when Luther here, uh, I mean this fellow here, sir, uh, that's when he left the ship. I just circled once, time enough to drop the rubber boat. Some New Zealanders in P-40 spotted it over, kept circling around in the air while I flew across the island, landed alongside the sun, let Joe and the French come out. By the time I got back to the other side of the island, our Navy planes were flying around in the air above this guy like a thick swarm of bees. They, uh, they kept the jab guns occupied while I slipped down and scooped them off the rubber boat. You'd have thought this guy was a $90 million cruiser they were out there. That there must have been 55 or 60 planes. 62! Are you not far enough, Adams? Pardon me if you me this cost the Navy $600,000. $600,000? What the hell are you so happy to have? Well, I, I was just thinking about my uncle. Remember my uncle I was telling you about? He used to tell my old man I'd never be worth a dime. Him and his lousy slot machines. Could you imagine the guy? How can you do this to me, Bill? What would make a man do a thing like this? Well, sir, tell us to keep moving. <coughs> or get kind of held in. When you're rich at that, take a trip to pick up a few souvenirs. Well, you've got to kind of horn in. If you get the picture. How did you know about it? Didn't know about it exactly. It's when I heard uh, Lieutenant Campbell speaking to that fellow in the back. Yeah. Right away I know there's something in here. A project. Mm. That's what I like, Captain. Projects, don't you? Yes. You broke it. Every regulation is a book. By God, Captain Bright, I'm going to throw it at you. Sir, sir, may I barge in? My co pilot watched this whole thing, you know. He thinks that this fellow Bill is down there in the rubber boat with all those planes over. So a kind of diversionary action. While the Japs were shooting at the planes and the villas, on the other side of the island, that sub was sliding into that little hole and depositing the Frenchman and Joe Cable in behind those rocks. What do you want me to do? Pay a medal on this guy? Hey, well, I don't want no medals, Captain. But I could use a little freedom, a little room to swing around in, if you know what I mean. If you get the picture... Get out of here. Get out of here! Get the hell out of here! Yes, sir! <laughs> <laughs>
We have been in contact with former friends of mine. We have set up quarters in a mango tree. No room but a lovely view. First, the weather. Green clouds over Bougainville, the tragedies, Chazul, and New Jersey. We expect rain in this region from 9 o'clock until 2 o'clock. Oh, pardon. My friend Joe corrects me. All 900 to 1400. And now, our military expert, Joe. All you Navy, Marine, and Army pilots, write this down. Surface crew. 19 troop barges headed down the bottom. Speed about 11 knots. Want to pass Benica and about 20 hundred tonight, escorted by heavy warships. There ought to be some way we can knock off a few of these. As for AOF, there is little indication of activity. Here, guard. The 22 bombers bent. So we go down the way by at 0600 heading southwest. There was a fighter escort not heavy. They should reach. Is that all? Is that all? That's it, sir. Yeah, Bill. You know what I like, Bill? Project. Project? About Miss Morbury, sir. You just have to tell us something someday. I haven't seen the guy in two weeks. I guess I'll do it now. Okay, okay. Why do I get all the tough jobs to do? Send her in.
all this stuff. Look at that piece. Mars, you can see, man, we the The whole picture of the South Pacific has changed. We're going the other way. Captain Brighton, sir, the launch is ready to take you to your ship. Hey, you got a ship, sir? Yes, fellas, I've got a ship. I am no longer a lousy. I am a commander. Come on, sir. So long, Captain Brighton. Oh, I never did get you in the break, did I? No. Ha, ha, ha. I forgot. You, unit will be on my ship. And I'll be seeing you. All of you. Get the picture. <laughs> CDs will embark on Carrier 6. All Marines to LCTs. Any questions? Move out! Jackson. 